Hello, in this video, I'm going to look at how to configure Kafka with your Micronauts or Spring Boot application. So usually I do videos for uh, configuring Unreal Engine, uh, but this is a pretty generic topic, which will be useful for many developers trying to integrate uh, Kafka with their, you know, uh, Micronauts or uh, Spring Boot server. So I thought I'll make one on this as well. And there's quite a lot of information available for just plain text uh, connection. I didn't find too much on Sassel, so that's why I basically documented all of that as well. Um, but this will be connected with our Unreal Engine product, project, and specifically I will be getting updates from UE server uh, relating to like uh, mob, uh, mob updates and things like that. So uh, this will be used with Unreal Engine for communicating with a server. So players will be connecting to Micronaut via WebSockets, and then the server will be com communicating via, via uh, Kafka, uh, through event-driven approach, okay? So basically all of the steps to accomplish uh, what I'm doing here will be on this blog post, so do check that out. Um, and there's some really useful documentation on Micronaut Kafka, for example, here. And all of the, basically all of the code that I'm doing is available on GitHub as well, so uh, do check that out. So if I make any updates, uh, this, you know, GitHub repository will also be updated. So in this video, I'm going to basically give a quick um, demo of it working, and I'm just going to go through it in a bit of a high level as well, uh, the components that you need to basically uh, cater for. So let's get started. So uh, perhaps the first thing that I'll do is uh, run the application, and you'll be able to see some stuff happening. And what, what the application will currently do is basically I added a schedule task. So you can see a singleton schedule task. So every 10 seconds, I'm gonna basically push a uh, update to Kafka. And uh, this will show you the um, publish functionality working. And I've also subscribed to that topic. And then you'll be able to see me basically uh, capture that uh, event and then print it to the screen. So you can see it's doing it over here now. So basically this class over here uh, is being instantiated with Micronaut, scheduled every 10 seconds. I create this new mob update and I populate it with a random UUID and it's gonna give it some state and um, basically attacking player one, right? So I'm basically simulating some sort of a UE server update, which I'm gonna push to Micronaut. I'm gonna consume that message and then process it further. So event-driven architecture. So, uh, and then I have a listener here as well. And the listener simply subscribes to this topic and then prints uh, the message, right? So you can see it working over here. Okay, so uh, let's get started with the implementation then. So we can get started with a Docker Compose. So Docker Compose is the place where we basically instantiate our Kafka. Uh, in order to instantiate Kafka, you also need Zookeeper. Okay, so there's a couple of things that you'll need to reference here. Uh, the first thing is this networks. So uh, the network between my Kafka and Zookeeper is effectively shared. So uh, this defines that. And then you can see it's also referenced over here. Uh, you need to basically specify what uh, image you're using. So, um, you know, obviously if I'm using this one, I'd suggest you use the same one because otherwise the environment variables might not be the same. Uh, but, you know, like feel free to choose whatever you like. Uh, this is the one I'm using. Uh, there's maybe better suited ones for your needs, but again, yeah, this is the one I'm using here. Okay, so you need to uh, specify Zookeeper and you need to open up the ports. Uh, so this is the default port. You can change that as well if you want. So for example, specifying it here. Um, and yeah, we're gonna be connecting our Kafka brokers to Zookeeper. So in production, you'll probably have multiple instances of this, um, but this is development, so we're just gonna have the one. And what we, what we have here is uh, this Kafka is opening up these two ports. So 1992 uh, will be used to uh, basically have plain text and 1993 will be our SASL enabled. Um, and yeah, basically you need to make sure that it's connected to Zookeeper and yeah, basically define all protocols and things like that. Uh, this file is very important. So if you're basically enabling SASL, so this uh, simple authentication, uh, you need to provide it like this information, right? The authentication information. So you basically specify it in here. Uh, I'll get to that very shortly. And there's a couple of other uh, things that you might need to do. So again, 
Um, some of it you might not need. So for example, auto create topics, this will be useful for dev. Maybe you'll have it disabled in production um, as you might run it through schema registry. Up to you to determine your uh, default replication factors or partitions. Uh, again, the replication factor should be one because here we only have the one broker essentially, right? So it's Kafka one. Uh, this thing was a bit of a pain to find, to be honest. I've referenced the link of where I got this variable from. Um, but basically, if this is not set to one, it will actually uh, silently fail in the um, Ka uh, Kafka container. Okay, so, um, but all of this works. I mean, you, you just saw the demo. So uh, basically, depending on the image, you know, maybe in a year's time or whatever, the image will change. You might need some different um, environment variables. So do check uh, the documentation and you know, the links for, for those things. I've also included some instructions for debugging as well in the blog post. So if you are struggling, do check through those as well. Um, okay, so now what we're gonna also specify is the volumes. So this will basically um, copy anything in the configs directory, so in here, into the um, containers, etc., uh, etc, Kafka configs, okay. So what it's going to do is going to basically put these two files into this directory. And this is important because one of them is this Kafka server JAS. So that's this file over here. So let's see the contents. So this is basically the authentication information for Kafka. Okay. So you can see it's a plain login module required username, password, user Kafka. Okay, cool. And uh, this is very similar. So this is config.properties. Uh, it also basically specifies those things. So this is for the server, and this is basically uh, if you wanted to uh, do this over CLI or something like that. And again, this is part of the testing instructions. Uh, you can specify to use this config when you're executing those commands. To be honest, when you're connecting via um, Micronaut or Spring Boot, you might not need this file because you will actually have some properties in your application.yaml uh, which you will basically use instead of this. Okay. And we'll have a look at those next, actually. So we've now looked into the Docker compose and these configurations. Okay. So now we just want to configure your, uh, Micronaut or Spring Boot application. So, uh, this is going to be in application.yaml and, uh, let's find them here. Okay. So this is the configuration that we'll need to specify in your application.yaml. And basically, uh, you're specifying what server that you're connecting to. If you have multiple, uh, this will look a little bit different. So you'll be able to specify something like uh, this. So basically, it'll be a list, right? So it'll be a list of available servers. Uh, again, this information will be uh, found in documentation. So, you know, basically check that out. But you'll be able to specify uh, different servers because you can have multiple here. Okay, so I'll just go back. Um, you'll need to specify the security protocol, SSL mechanism, uh, and here is the config that we're using. So do bear in mind that basically it's the same information that we just looked at here. Um, and then you can specify um, things for your consumers. So basically when you create your listeners, so I've created a uh, listener over here. You can provide a group ID. So mine is called MMO server. So I can go ahead and copy this. And in here, basically, you can specify different config for uh, different groups. Okay, so uh, that's how you can con um, control properties for your different li uh, listeners uh, through the application.yaml files. Um, and obviously you can also provide additional information here as well. So there's multiple different ways. And again, just check the documentation here. I'm just providing a simple working scenario. Okay. In the topics, you can specify the topic that you're monitoring, essentially the, the topic that you've subscribed to. And then, um, you can put in here the object that you're wishing to receive. Okay. So you need to make sure that you can serialize the object into here. You might have issues with incompatibility. Perhaps it will throw exceptions if um, it doesn't match. Um, so do bear that in mind. Um, but obviously when I send 
the data here. I send it with this object so I know it should be able to serialize it back, which it does. Oh, and for reference, this is the object that we're sending. So you can see um, it's it's not a simple one, but it's not a complex one either. You know, so it's got a bunch of strings. It also has this motion. Um, I haven't filled it out right now, but you know, obviously, I can. I'm going to be sending some more complex data structures a bit later, basically. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, let's have a look. So that's the listener. So we've covered uh, the group ID. So the group ID should match the one that we've specified in uh, the consumers. And you can also specify additional information here on those um, consumers. Um, so one of the final things that we can look at is the producers. So the producers are actually basically just interfaces and Micronaut and Spring Boot will create the code for those interfaces. So it's really good, um, like surprisingly good with how easy they've made it. Uh, but basically you just provide a Kafka client, you can give it a, a ID here and then basically specify the topic that you're going to be sending the message to create the function and the payload that you will be sending with it. And, and that's it, you're done. So that's all you needed to do for uh, sending uh, the updates using Micronaut Framework. And Spring Boot, you know, about 90% of it will be the same. So there might be some slight differences, uh, but it will be fundamentally pretty much the same throughout uh, and that's basically it i hope i haven't missed anything but yeah do check the blog post because that one literally goes step by step through uh, all of the files that i've mentioned and yeah uh, also the testing part so good luck and see you next time thanks bye